The Magic School Bus, Chapter Book Butterfly Battle Written by Nancy White Illustrations by Hope Gangloft Introductions Hi, my name is Phoebe. I am one of the kids in Ms. Frizzle's class. Maybe you've heard of Ms. Frizzle. Sometimes we just call her the Frizz. She is a terrific teacher, but a little strange. In fact, things can get really strange in her class. Science is one of Ms. Frizzle's favorite subjects, and she knows everything about it. We go on lots of field trips in the magic school business, believe me, it's not called magic for nothing. Once we get on board, anything can happen. Miss Frizzle likes to surprise us, but we can usually tell when she is planning a special field trip, we just look at what she's wearing. One day, the Frizz came into class wearing a dress that had butterfly designs all over it. She was also wearing butterfly earrings, butterfly shoes, and a necklace that looked like a butterfly. With all those butterfly wings, the Frizz looked like she might take off any minute. Little did we know that we were all about to take off. You'll never guess what happened that day, but one thing's for sure, the field trips in my old school weren't anything like this one. Chapter 1 Our classroom was absolutely quiet. Everyone was just staring straight ahead and not saying a word. This is not how it is most of the time in Ms. Frizzle's room. We were supposed to be working on a skit for a unit on butterflies, but no one had any ideas. So we just sat there. It was awful. Just when we thought we couldn't stand the silence anymore, Ms. Frizzle flitted into the room wearing her butterfly outfit. My, but it's quiet in here, she commented. I expected to find a flutter of activity. We don't have any ideas for our butterfly skit, said Wanda. From the desk of Ms. Frizzle. Who put the butter in butterfly? Butterflies actually have nothing to do with butter. And butterflies are not flies. But they are insects. Like other insects, they have. Three body sections a head and front, a middle part called the thorax, and a back part called the abdomen. Six legs. A hard outer coating called an exoskeleton. Most insects also have two feelers, or antennae, on their heads and either two or four wings. A butterfly has two antennae and four wings. And the more we try, the more ideas we don't get, added Tim. I have something here that might inspire you, said Miss Frizzle, showing us the necklace she was wearing. Hanging on a chain was a locket shaped like a butterfly, and it had the most beautiful bright and shimmery colors on its wings. This locket, Miss Frizzle told us, belonged to my great-great-grandmother Matilda. She was called Magic Matilda. How come they called her that? asked Wanda. Could she do magic tricks? Great-great-grandmother Matilda was a world-famous magician, Miss Frizzle answered proudly. Did Magic Matilda's locket get those beautiful colors by magic? asked Ralphie. No, it didn't, answered Ms. Frizzle. As a matter of fact, this locket is made of real butterflies' wings. So the locket isn't magical? asked Arnold hopefully. Arnold, if you can believe it, is a kid who thinks a good day is when nothing special happens. His idea of fun is a couple of tests and a nice big homework assignment, not a magic locket. I don't know, Arnold, said Ms. Frizzle. But Magic Matilda always said the locket was magical. I knew it, said Arnold, sounding disappointed. Great, said Carlos. Maybe it can give us an idea for our skit. Can we ask it to help us? I don't think that's the kind of magic the locket has, Carlos, said Ms. Frizzle. What kind of magic does it have? asked Tim. That's the wonderful mystery, said Ms. Frizzle. No one knows. There's a legend in my family that whoever can open the locket will possess a secret magic charm, but so far no one has been able to do it. She fiddled with the clasp on the locket as she spoke, but it didn't open. Excellent said Arnold. 
and with a little luck, no one ever will. I wasn't sure I believed that the locket could really be magical, but then, strange things do happen in Ms. Frizzle's class. I decided to wait and see. Time to get back to our skit, class, said Ms. Frizzle, still inspecting her locket. What skit, said Wanda. We don't even have an idea for a skit. We're not even close to having an idea, said Ralphie. Can't you help us, Ms. Frizzle? pleaded Keisha. We're stuck. Ms. Frizzle looked thoughtful. Then she grinned and said, well, I just might be able to help you out. What this class needs is a good field trip. Here we go again, Arnold groaned. Now we're all going to shrink down to a tiny little size and turn into butterflies. Then we'll get chased by some huge, horrible birds, or someone will catch us in a net and sell us to a natural history museum. Everyone knows that Ms. Frizzle believes in learning by doing. Well, you've got one thing right, Arnold, said Ms. Frizzle. The museum has a famous butterfly collection, and I think we should go there and see it. As long as we're going to see it and not be it, said Arnold. He looked like he was feeling a little better, but I couldn't help noticing that the frizz had that look in her eye. The outfit, the locket, and most of all the look they all gave me the feeling that we weren't going to end up in a nice, quiet museum that day. I could tell the frizz had something much more exciting up her sleeve, or under her wing. Then Miss Frizzle said those three little words that all her students know so well, to the bus. Chapter 2 we all piled on the bus and got in our seats. Just behind me, I heard Keisha whisper to Carlos, I don't see how looking at butterflies in a museum is going to help us with our skit. Me, neither, said Carlos. I wish we could see live butterflies instead. I turned around and said I thought so, too. In my old school, we saw plenty of stuff in museums, but since I've been in Ms. Frizzle's class, I've gotten used to a little more excitement. We didn't think anyone was listening, but then we noticed Liz, our class lizard, perched on the back of Keisha's seat. She looked like she agreed with us. Later, I found out that lizards eat butterflies, so Liz might have had her own reasons for what she did next. She took a flying leap onto the dashboard of the bus and landed on a lever that started to flash. Then the whole bus lifted off the ground. We were flying! The bus is turning into a giant butterfly, shouted Tim. I couldn't believe it. Our bus had sprouted beautiful orange and black wings too on each side. They were flapping up and down slowly and gracefully. What's happening, Miss Frizzle? I asked. I was a little scared, but excited, too. It seems that we've had a change in plans, class, the frizz answered cheerfully. I knew those plans were too good to be true, muttered Arnold. According to my research, said D.A., the bus is a monarch butterfly. That means we're going south because monarchs travel to warmer climates in the fall. D.A. was right, as usual. She knows lots of facts because she loves doing research. Dee's real name is Dorothy Ann, but we hardly ever call her that. The Incredible Journey by Dee. Some kinds of butterflies migrate or travel very long distances. Painted lady butterflies migrate from Africa all the way to Kelland. What most people don't realize is that no one butterfly makes the whole Ronde Eve that long. They stop and lay eggs along the way, so new butterflies can join the flock for the rest of the trip. Looking down, we could see the blue ocean, a beach, and then palm trees. We were over Florida! Soon the butterfly bus landed right in front of a sign that read Butterfly Land. Behind the sign was a huge building. Well, it wasn't a building exactly. It was more like a giant tent with netting instead of solid walls or a roof. Through the netting, we could see beautiful gardens filled with brightly colored flowers. A tour guide came running over to us. Welcome, class. My name is Peter. 
I think you'll enjoy Butterfly Land just like all the other classes that come here. Peter didn't know yet that we weren't just like other classes. But he was about to find out. Open the door, and let's explore, said Ms. Frizzle. We all climbed out of the bus. I couldn't wait to get a look at some live butterflies. Before we went in, Ms. Frizzle told us she had to wait for us outside. We don't want any of the butterflies to turn into lizard lunches, she said. Liz didn't mind. She eats bugs, so she thinks the whole outdoors is her snack bar. Inside, Butterfly Land was amazing. Butterflies of all sizes and colors were flying around the trees and flowers. The first place Peter took us was the butterfly nursery. First he showed us a plant with tiny white butterfly eggs stuck right on the leaves. They were so small, they looked like white specks. A female butterfly lays her eggs on a leaf, Peter told us. She uses a sticky liquid from her body to make sure they don't fall off. Next Peter showed us baby caterpillars that had just hatched. They were tiny and had white, black, and yellow stripes. Someday, each caterpillar will become a butterfly, said Peter. Two kids, from Peter. It's just a stage butterflies and many other insects go through four stages of life. Here is what each stage is called, one, egg laid by a female butterfly on a leaf. Two, larva, the caterpillars that hatch from the eggs. Three, pupa, when the caterpillar grows a hard shell, sometimes called a aerosolus. Four, butterfly, the adult stage, when an insect goes through all four stages, it's called going through complete metamorphosis. Metamorphosis is pronounced like this, metamorphosis. H is a Greek word that means a change of shape. You can tell what kind of butterfly a caterpillar will become by the way it looks. What kind of butterfly will these caterpillars turn into? asked Wanda. These will be monarch butterflies, said Peter. Just like our bus, shouted Tim. Is that how our bus looked when it was a baby? wondered Keisha. Peter looked confused. Miss Frizzle just kept smiling. Those children have such imaginations, she said. Peter gave us a strange look, but then he went on with his talk. The first thing a newborn caterpillar does, he said, is to start eating. First it eats the shell of its own egg. Then it starts eating the leaf where it hatched. But most caterpillars will eat only a few kinds of leaves, so the butterfly has to lay her eggs on the right kind of plant. Monarchs lay their eggs only on milkweed plants. According to my research, milkweed is poisonous to many animals, said D.A. and that makes the monarch caterpillar poisonous, too. Right you are, said Peter, looking impressed and a little surprised. I guess he'd never met a kid like D.A. before. And it tastes terrible, he continued. All this is good for a caterpillar because birds and other animals won't eat it. They don't like eating monarch butterflies, either. I was wondering how the animals know that monarchs taste bad. After all, it's not like they can tell one another, I ate one of those monarchs yesterday and it made me really sick. Then Peter explained, the monarch caterpillar's colors black and orange are warning colors in nature. They tell other animals to stay away. Those warning colors are this caterpillar's defense. What is that thing hanging from that twig over there? asked Wanda. That's a chrysalis, Peter answered. That's the form a caterpillar takes while it's getting ready to be a butterfly. Two kids, from Peter. From caterpillar to chrysalis. A caterpillar grows quickly, but its skin doesn't grow at all. When the caterpillar gets too big for its skin, the skin comes off, and a new skin appears underneath. This is called molting, and it happens a few times as a caterpillar grows bigger and, pupil case, bigger. When a caterpillar sheds its skin for the last time, there is a hard shell underneath. The caterpillar has then changed into a pupa. Chrysalis is a special name for a butterfly's pupa. The chrysalis looked like it was made out of gold. 
Peter told us it would become a black and white butterfly called a tree nymph. The monarch chrysalis was about an inch, 2.5 m, long. It was light green with shiny gold dots and a gold stripe around the top. How do those wormy-looking little caterpillars get to look like beautiful gold earrings? I asked Peter. Those pupas aren't moving at all, said Arnold. Are you sure they're not dead? They may not be moving on the outside, said Peter, but inside, a lot is going on. A butterfly will come out of each of these shells. What kind of butterfly will that big brown caterpillar be? asked D.A. the one that looks like a dead leaf. You can figure that out for yourself, said Peter. I'm going to give each of you a field guide so you can look up pictures of the caterpillars and butterflies and find out what kind they are. Dia used her field guide right away to look for a picture of the big brown caterpillar. It will turn into an owl butterfly, she said. Owl butterflies come from the rainforests of South and Central America. Peter told us a lot more facts about butterflies. We found out that there were butterflies back in the age of the dinosaurs. We learned that the vice